Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to continue with the PBD podcast. Patrick Bet David couldn't wait to get Dominic Terzinski onto his podcast and discuss with him migration and the fight for Europe allegedly, but ultimately, of course, he finds a way to make it about Muslims and how Muslims are the threat to Europe and to the rest of the world. Those violent, violent Muslims again. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. What country has taken on the most Muslims? The millions that have come in, what country took down, took up the most? Uh, is it UK or? Uh, UK is a, is a different story. I would, I would say Germany, Sweden. You have to remember there's no go zones sure. in Sweden now. UK is different because of Brexit or UK is different because of the, the way uh, I, they... I, I think it's different because, uh, what, yeah, first of all, because of the Brexit, but also mm, you've got third and, and fourth generation of Muslims in, in England now. Uh, problems, uh, the, the, uh, why is it a problem? You, you would have to explain why it is a problem for Muslims to live in a non Muslim country over generations. Because if you look into Poland, we have the Lipka Tatars, and they've been living in Poland for over 600 years. So this is roughly 20 to 25 generations, if you will. And they are integrated in Polish society. They fought war side by side with the Polish people. And it has been no issue for over half a millennia. So therefore, yet again, he has to define why Islam is the issue, why Muslims living in a non-Muslim country for multiple generations is a problem in the first place. Yeah, that's the data. When you when you see uh, the the history of, of of Great Britain, it's a little bit different because you've got, as I said, third and fourth generation. But when we are talking about the Muslims coming from 2015, I would say Germany, France, Sweden, uh, Italy, a little bit, but uh, but Germans they have uh, the biggest problem because Angela Merkel was inviting them. Refugees welcome. Obviously, they are not refugees. I'm trying to repeat it every single time. There is a legal difference between refugee mm -hmm. between term refugee mm -hmm. and migrant. Refugee by the international law is the person who flees to the first safe country from the country of conflict. So like. Eritrea, Somalia, it's not a neighboring country in Poland. <laughs> they, you, know, you know what I mean? So they are migrants and, and they're I the agree worst. With I absolutely agree with this distinction between refugee and migrant. Moreover, I agree as well that Europe countries such as Germany and Sweden do not have to take in more so-called refugees. It is definitely not their responsibility to take in the whole world. But where I disagree, of course, is to label those people simply as Muslims. Because as I said previously, you have Muslims living in Poland, Tatars, and they're well behaved. This is not about Muslim, Christian, and whatnot, because amongst those refugees that come to Europe, you have multiple religions, of course. You have plenty of Africans coming over to Europe that are Christian. So it's not the Muslim threat that he wants to propagandize here. Moreover, we already have Muslims living in Europe in their own countries, such as Albania or Bosnia. Islam is already part of Europe. It's not the eternal enemy of Europe, but the right-wingers always want to display it like that. Why don't you focus onto your own politicians that allow the mass migration? Or rather, why don't you focus onto the people that have your politicians in their hands? It is a serious threat. When you, when you see uh, data from, from Germany, uh, there, is a, there is a very special committee on uh, on the parks in uh, in Germany because you cannot go out after 10 o'clock because after 10 o'clock there are so many rapes in the parks they 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 in they Berlin. they had a summit of police and other services in Germany in Germany what to do to to let girls go out after 10 o'clock and when i when i'm when i'm trying to bring the data in, in the european parliament they are furious they they don't want to listen and yet again i absolutely agree that this is absolutely unacceptable to let such people roam free in your country but yet again we cannot deflect and simply say well it's muslims if you look into islam you will see that premarital sex is absolutely haram it's forbidden therefore going out in a park and molesting girls is obviously forbidden as well if those people would actually practice their religion they 
wouldn't do it. But instead of acknowledging this, he is playing the Christians versus the Muslims. And this has been going on forever. We are being baited into this religious war. And meanwhile, another party is pretty happy about this. Let yeah, but let's leave it at that here for YouTube. We cannot go any further into this topic. But that being said, I travel the world, I travel to Muslim countries, and when you talk to Muslim countries, especially first world Muslim countries, they will all agree that countries such as Germany shouldn't take in more refugees and more migrants, especially not that kind, that is not behaving, that is criminal. Of course, every country has to protect their borders. That is common sense, and Europe has lost their common sense altogether. But let me ask you, okay, so since 2015, Germany took on the most. If you pull up the statistic that I, that I just sent you, Kelly, I sent you a link in, in text if you can right. pull it up. Mm -hmm. The statistic data says that projected number of Muslims by 2050, in and right now, uh, in 2010 was 4%. They're saying by 2050, which is like 16 years from now, it's going to be around 20%. They're going to go from 4% to 20% is what statistics It's going to be more, but okay. Okay, so let's just say it's one out of five. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to be 20%. How has that positively impacted Germany? How has that negatively impacted Germany? I can't see any positives. No positives. Like what? They don't pay taxes. They don't want to work. Uh, most uh, most crimes them. committed. No Muslim wants to pay Percentage wise, taxes. committed by by illegal migrants, mainly Muslims. That's the data. So what 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 kind of enrichment is this? I okay. can't see it. But he did it himself here. He just mentioned illegal migrants. And we all agree here, at least I assume, that a country should protect itself from illegal migrants. It's just logical, right? You as a country, you have a certain way of bringing people in or not. And to enter into your country, those people need then in turn a visa. I personally live in Thailand at the moment. And of course, I need a visa in order to live here as a European citizen. That is normal. So anybody that enters into this country illegally is of course committing a crime and therefore is not supposed to stay in that country. Therefore, yet again, why make it about Christianity versus Islam if you could simply make it about migration policies and about the criminal act of entering your country illegally? The positives, they, they ask me, they, 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 they still, uh, they're still trying to picture me and, and, and call me Islamophobe. It's, if that would be non-believer, if that would be a Chinese community or a Indian or any other, I would say the same by the data. But what would you say? Data Again, this is absolutely laughable, of course, because you wouldn't say the same. What you are supposed to say is illegal migrant and stick with this. But you never do. You speak about Muslims. That is very, very, uh, very straight. Most of the, okay, let's say uh, 46 46 percent of all crimes committed um, in Sweden uh, is committed by the uh, Muslims under 18. Under 18. 72 percent. Is this factual? Interior Minister published the data. Committed in total by Muslims. How come? If they are 20 percent of the society, why is why the uh, over 70 percent of crimes are committed by by Muslims. So when you ask me about positives, I really can't see any. Why do you think, though? Why do you think that's happening? Is it, um, is it because, it like, when you uh, uh, in in uh, 1978, 79, when uh, 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 early 80s, late 70s, when Jimmy Carter was a president, he yeah. was going after, hey, human rights, you know, Cuba, you're doing this, you know, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. he sends his 125 political. Prisoners, prisoners and you know that's where the movie Scarface yeah. Tony Montana yeah, 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 yeah. is it because they're not right. sending their and this is actually a very good example because now you had Cubans that got over to Miami and then they started the cocaine business etc etc but nobody ever got the idea to speak about Christians right because Cubans on average are Christians in this case it was Cubans it was Latins and whatnot nobody spoke about Christianity however with those migrants we're speaking about Islam why? Best. Or because, it, why do you think it is? Because they hate us. Who hates us? Muslims hate us and they do not even hide it. There mm. is a very famous video of the guy on the streets in Germany who, who is having a conversation with the German guy and he was like, we are taking over this country. Your daughters will be our slaves and we will take, we will take this country over 
by the number of children. You don't have a children? Who said this? One of the Muslim guys. I'll, I'll send you a Is link. this Canada? Because I've seen that if it's Canada. Maybe it's Canada. Maybe okay. it's, yeah, maybe it's Canada. It. Maybe yeah. it's this is absolutely hilarious. This proof is a YouTube video about a guy in Germany. Oh, but potentially, maybe it's actually Canada. So he's just listing a YouTube video where some person said something. And therefore, this is the evidence. This is the proof that Muslims hate us. But anyways, in this supposed alleged video, the Muslim, the Muslim man apparently is saying that they will take over by birth rates by creating more children and the Europeans are not creating enough children. And this is just factual. But if you look into white nationalists, into conservatives, they're not addressing the root issue that their people are severely atheistic. They present themselves as Christians, but are not Christian whatsoever. And they abandoned their families. That's just what it is. They don't want to produce children. They want to study. They want to party. They just want to have fun. And nobody cares about reproduction. So why don't you address that first and foremost before you critique other people for doing what is absolutely natural? Yeah, Maybe I've it's Canada. Maybe yeah, it's Canada. But the way of thinking That's is the is. same. The mentality is the same because in Germany, the uh, one of the clerics said that they will take over this country by the numbers of children. So if yeah, you so have a plan, which is which, which is called Hydra, right? This Taking over the, the land by the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's absolutely amazing. The guy has no idea. So Hydra is actually leaving the non-Muslim land and going to a Muslim land. That's the real meaning of Hydra. But yet again, what is more amazing is to see his kind of proof. There's one cleric, one imam, and he said that. And so therefore, it must be right. I can find you many extreme Christian preachers. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! But you wouldn't take that as evidence and you would say, well, that's just one crazy person, right? But when it comes down to Islam, you hear a person saying something and therefore he's the representative of all Islam. I think it comes, I think it comes from mentality, from, uh, from the way of, well, you see, in our Christian world, mercy, forgiveness is a very big part of our way of thinking for them the most important is revenge war um and violence that's that's what it <laughs> yeah, is that's i mean i'm sorry to say that oh, well but I'm uh sorry. you know all yeah the guy could be a stand-up comedian it's absolutely amazing because if you actually would open up the quran and you would look into how allah how god is addressed as arahman which means the most merciful you would potentially come to a different conclusion right <laughs> if you would actually look into quotes from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you would read be merciful to others and you will receive mercy forgive others and allah will forgive you or in the quran we read repel evil with what is better and your enemy will become as close as an old and valued friend. He's making a great case where he is not an Islamophobe. Calling for for terror attacks, uh, for the holy for war. Terror attacks. We don't have it in our mentality. We know that. But the problem is that <laughs> politicians are... Yeah, yet again, this is absolutely amazing because the term holy war comes actually from the Christian tradition. The concept of the holy war is, of course, found in the Bible, to be precise, in the book of Joshua. And this has been used famously, of course, for the crusades throughout history. In Islam, we have jihad, and jihad does not mean holy war. It simply means struggle. And therefore, yes, you can struggle against an enemy. However, what I want to make clear here is that the terminology holy war comes from the Christian tradition. I'm scared to say that out loud. I'm not scared. <laughs> you don't have to be scared. We know the difference. The, dif tradition. the difference is, is that we are ready to forgive. We are ready to say sorry. We are, uh, we are merciful. We... We, we know that we commit sins and we are ready to say that we are weak. For them, the most important part of their life is holy war. This is what they do. <laughs> in many ways. All right, we have almost 2 billion Muslims at this point in time. And the most important thing for those Muslims is holy war. Even though, yet again, that's not the terminology within Islam. But nevertheless, holy war is the most important thing for those people. So why don't we see World War Three, World War Four, World War Five? being fought by now Muslims. Actually, let me think about this. World War I and World War II wasn't fought by Muslims either. Hmm, strange. With a knife, with a sword, with the bombs. And it, happen, it, it happens throughout the years. I'm not going to go centuries back, but we know what is happening. Uh, I, I was on Al Jazeera. <clears throat> they, they invited me to, 
to have an interview. And obviously they ask me, why do I think that they are a threat? And obviously the guy says that not every Muslim is a terrorist. That terrorist. Not every Muslim is a terrorist, but most of the terrorists are Muslim. It's a fact. <laughs> He's speaking so about they're it trying as if he to just reverse made up naturally. The situation He's repeating the, the sense of the over and over again. Data. Obviously, not every Muslim is a, is a terrorist, but most of the terrorists are Muslims. And that is a fact. Okay, let's look into the definition of terrorism. Terrorism, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. All right, so by that definition, let's not speak about Europeans colonizing South America, Africa, Muslim lands, waging wars against civilians in Asia, committing all kinds of atrocities with their greatest ally, Israel. Let's not speak about this. Let's just speak about certain nut jobs that blow themselves up. What we need now in this world, what I believe that politicians needs in, in this world is just honesty. Be honest. Yeah, Say as it is. Stop, Do not yeah. be afraid. I have, I have this, imp I have this impression that most of the politicians such an are afraid of 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 um, of open discussion, honest discussion. Mm -hmm. They are scared that they will be stigmatized by one or the other group. I don't care. I really don't. I know how it is. I, I, I speak with my neighbors and everyone is just terrified. It's what is what is happening of now. What? This guy is really an anecdote machine. So now he's speaking with his neighbors and his poor neighbors, the poor granny, is absolutely terrified. Terrified of what? He mentioned that in Poland you have 0.1% Muslims. So therefore, what is the problem within your country? Why are the people then terrified? What is up with your neighbors? It's a fear. Whatever. Different yeah, kind fear. of fears. COVID. They tried to fear the whole world, lock us down. I agree. Terrorism. And then uh, so radical Islamists. No? Fear. Fear is present. So we have to free ourselves. We, we need politicians who do not... What? Do not have, do, do not afraid. Are you okay? Of, of calling things as they are. Okay, so he mentions COVID and how everybody was put into fear. I absolutely agree with this. Then he goes on and speaks about radical Islam yet again. So is it just a boogeyman? Do politicians try to instill fear within the population? Is this the case, or is it a real threat? Make up your mind. And I think we have to fight for normality, for the normal language. Look at these what? <laughs> pictures and footages from Iran before the revolution. That was a beautiful country, mm -hmm. beautiful country. Mm -hmm. What happened? What they, they, you know, <laughs> what's happened in 70s and 80s? They destroyed the beauty of this country. They, they just destroyed it. It wasn't like, yeah, ages ago. Yeah, okay, man. Of course, he just wants to give you a distorted black and white picture. He doesn't go into what has happened before the revolution in Iran. The only thing that is interesting for him is, of course, before revolution, bikinis and now burkas. What happened? That was 70s. And look yeah. what is happening now. Great. So when you naked ask me people. for for the That's positives, so good. I like maybe that. I'm an ignorant, I like but I can't see woman. any. When I see the the world, you know, it's September amazing. 11. It's absolutely amazing. I have to stop it again. You know, meanwhile, he's a Catholic and they worship, even though they're going to say, no, we don't. They worship Mother Mary, which is wearing a veil, which is wearing a hijab, right? This is a holy figure. But when it comes down to everyday life, Please, women, wear bikinis. Only like this, you're European and enlightened. And many, Pathetic. you know, the terror attacks in, in London, then stabbings and rapes in Germany and in, and in England now, every single day, every single day, we have a news in Europe that someone was stabbed, raped, killed yeah, kick him by off. Muslims. Someone. And this is just now a fact. Muslims, yeah. And... My problem if there were is Indians, I would say the same. Do not react. Yeah. If you don't want people, if you don't want anyone to be Islamophobe, I'm not. It has nothing to do with <laughs> religion. It's, it's about data. React. You should condemn them. 
I can't see any condemnation. That is the problem that wow. the Muslim world do not. Nobody. Okay, so by his own evidential standard, now we just need to YouTube one video, one video of one imam that is condemning a terrorist attack. And like that, we would have proof, of course, that the Islamic world is condemning it. Because this is the standard. It's a double standard, of course, by him proposed that when he hears one Muslim saying something radical, this is all Muslims. And now, all of a sudden, he hasn't heard one person condemning any type of terroristic attack. Yeah, sure, bro. Eric's do it's not so react for, for so much pain, for pain. so much hatred. Emotion. And this is the problem, that if that would happen in a Christian Catholic world, Pope would, this, would, would react, bishops would react, parishes sure. and communities would condemn. The Pope is too busy. Uh, yeah, I think the Pope has different things to do. You know, it's much more important to dance with Brazilian samba dancers than to actually address anything. Actually, if he does address something of political importance, he likes to approve of same-sex couples. That's really important. The violence, this is what normal world would do. <laughs> I can't see any of those uh, Nothing, uh, of this kind of steps. Not and, one. And, uh, not one. In, in, Only terrorism and violence in everywhere. That is my yes. problem about it. Oh, right, guys. And this is it for today's video. Absolutely proven, of course, that this man is not a so-called Islamophobe. Anyways, guys, I'm going to cut it off here because the video is long enough as it is. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>